and drop. I'm going to stop right here to tell you a couple more things. Most people will start styling their hair when it's still dark. Once your hair is dry, then you can style it. Um, a lot of people like to use a round brush. I'm going to show you how to use a round brush, but I'm actually going to use an iron on her. But I wanted to show you really quick on the round brush because so many people use the round brush incorrectly. The round brush only works on dry hair. When your hair is wet, it cannot style. When it's dry, it will, it's like trying to put a, um, if you try to blow dry your hair with a brush when it's wet, it's like trying to curl your hair with a curling iron when it's wet, it will not work. Your hair needs to be completely dry in order for a round brush to work. I'm one of those people that I'm really weird. I, I see like one hair in here and it bugs me. They get trapped in the little seams, especially down here where my hand is. Round brushes only work on dry hair. Don't put them on your wet hair. It's not gonna work and it'll cause a lot of breakage. The next thing is too much hair. Remember we constantly talk about too much all this hair down here, even though it would be nice, it's not going to style correctly. The round brush is to create volume and then smoothness. If I'm down here with the round brush, I'm not going to be doing anything up here. The other thing, these blow dryers that come with the nozzle, a lot of people don't know about this thing, but this thing is critical when you're blow drying with the round brush. Use it with the round brush because it directs the air and the heat straight to where you're trying to get the hair to perform. The other thing is make sure whatever you're doing, you should get the hair dry. Hair just doesn't perform until it gets dry. So make that be your focus. This little end, great way to section your hair off. Just gonna heat it up. Okay, heat. And this is the part that nobody likes. You gotta let it cool down. If you don't let it cool down, it's not gonna hold what you just did, which is this, see this up movement? I'm doing that to create volume in her hair. See that? Ooh, and you know what? I'm gonna put a lighter drape on her. wanted to create volume at the scalp but you weren't worried about the ends because you know you're going to use a curling iron or iron. you can even just do this part heat make sure it's raised up and then you let go and you can see how her hair is popping off of her scalp because we lifted it as we blow dry now i'm going to be i um blow dry her hair already for volume so I'm actually going to use the iron because I just want to smooth out her hair a little bit before we cut it. And then I'm actually going to put some curls in it with the flat iron and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to take some big sections and smooth out the ends so that I can do a nice even haircut for her. And you guys can see already how all of the blonde is gone. It's still here, but now we've toned it and it's a silver color. And she has a few spots because of porosity where it is a little bit more of a lavender hue, but not a big deal. It will wash out over time and uh, most people can't see it. Probably something only her and I could even see. Especially once you get the hair styled it all goes away and just blends together. She has a super blended 
highlight. It's not big and chunky like I had to do mine because of my streaks. First, it's just very sparkly. Um, notice how I am flat ironing with the comb. I told you guys earlier about the ego thing. This technique where I put the comb in my thumb, iron, follow. It's such a great way to iron because the smoother the hair is before it enters the iron, the smoother it will come out. I also, of course, I'm not worried about burning my hands because I'm not touching her hair. To get a much better flat iron when you flat iron with a comb. Always comb the hair before you flat iron. Don't run the flat iron with tangles in it. You're just gonna iron tangles. Another thing, Terry has straight hair. So see how giant these sections are? If she was an overly curly haired person, I would be doing exactly the same thing. I just would be taking a really skinny section so I could get the iron all the way down to her scalp. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want her hair to be flat at the scalp. So if you are an overly curly haired African American, whatever you are that has kinky curly hair, you just take small sections to get down to the scalp. Everybody else, if you're like Cherry, you need to take big sections so that you're not putting that iron down here at the scalp. You're putting it out here. Putting the iron too close to the scalp is gonna make it flat. Now for my overly curly haired people that have to go all the way to the scalp because your hair is curly, when you're all done flat ironing, jump back to the round brush and do the round brush at the scalp. And then you can have full straight hair. With Cherry, I just want to create some smoothness. Always comb before. Another thing you're gonna notice about her hair, I'll show you right here. This is also really common. Popping things. Turn this that way. Cherry's hair here, this is the whirl of her head. Everybody has one. It doesn't have a lot of strength in her hair. So you can see her hair only gets to about right here and then it starts to, it, you might think this is breakage, but it's not breakage. It's called hair life. How long can my hair stay attached to the head before it naturally falls out and a new one replaces itself? That's why some people can grow their hair down to the middle of their back and some people can only get their hair here because it's about hair life. So for her right here in the world, which is normal, she has a shorter hair life. So this hair right here, perfect. Take this, come on. Look at her hair. You can see how she's got a decent amount of density right here, but look at how there's not very much hair left up here. That's because right about right here is where this hair stops the ability to hang on anymore. There's some that manage to hang on a little bit longer, but the majority of them can only hang on to about right here. It just happens to be that right here, that's the hair life of this hair. So she always needs to stay in a somewhat longer layered haircut. She can't have a super straight long because this hair is never gonna get any longer. She could let this hair grow longer. Push this down. She could let this hair get longer, but this hair never is. So she's gonna end up with a gap in between here. It's just the way her hair is naturally. Everybody has a different hair life. And just right here, she just has a little bit less of a hair life on her whorl.
the number one thing people will ask me about growing hair is how do I get my hair to grow long? You can only get your hair to grow long if you have a long genetic hairline. If you don't, there's nothing you can do to get that hair to grow long. It's just about what kind of hair you have. My hair, I can get it down to about maybe bra length and that's it. After that, it's gonna start breaking off and just look wispy at the bottom. All right, we're just about done and then we'll start cutting. Uh, if you were gonna cut your own hair, it's pretty much the same process as cutting someone else's hair. You're just gonna be doing it to yourself. Might be a little bit more challenging to see the back, but it could still be done. I cut my hair all the time. I haven't had access to a hairdresser in years since I sold my salon. I have some friends who are hairdressers, but you know, we don't live by one another. So I'm not privileged enough to see them, especially with the pandemic at all to even get a haircut. But that's okay, you can trim your own hair. I just had a classmate um, message me last night. She wanted to cut her mother's hair. She's going through dementia. And uh, she's like, could I do it? I said, absolutely, you can cut your mother's hair. There's nothing wrong with cutting your mother's hair. She sent me pictures, it looked beautiful. She did a great job. The ability to cut hair is really just the ability to kind of see things um, evenly. We can't cut hair even because the body isn't even. We just need to cut it so it looks even. Okay. I'm going to put the lighting a little closer so you can see her color. This is her color after we've toned her. Not yellow anymore. Not quite so warm anymore. The camouflage is just to make her look blended. And remember, we're just camouflaging our transition. We're not trying to do the Jack Martin where everything is done in one time. All right. When you cut hair, always make sure it is dry and straight. There we go. The next thing, you guys see, um, especially if you go into the salon where they how I was doing earlier, pinning up the hair. You don't need to do all that to cut it. Only if you're somebody with a big fat ponytail, those people I do have to section off. But 95% of the people I never have to section when it comes to cutting. You're just gonna comb the hair straight down. The next thing that is so important, you gotta put your head down or your sister, whoever you're cutting. If you don't put the head down, what happens is this comes out jaggedy. When you're cutting the back line, head has to be down. Sherry, are we just trimming or do you want me to take some length off? Can you take some length off? Feeling a little too long? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. And that's another one with your hairdressers. A, we should never assume we're doing the exact same thing. And B, give them options. So I asked Cherry, did she want me to trim it or take up some length? I know she's not looking for a whole new hair, haircut, but that would be a different conversation if she wants. And she said immediately, yeah, it's getting a little too long. And I agree because for us, if we take it a little bit shorter, I can make this look not so thin up here. The longer she lets this go, the thinner this will look up here. Okay. So we're going to go straight across. And she said, I want to take up a little bit of length. And here's another thing that I do. Because I'm cutting her hair dry, she doesn't have to wonder, what am I cutting? What is it gonna look like? She's gonna be able to see right now in real time what her hair cut looks like. And she can say, you know what, Julie, that's good. Or, hey, take it up a little bit more. So the first thing I will always do is take this bottom part off and then show her so she can see if it's enough for her. If you're cutting your own hair, 
don't take, okay, I took off a lot. If you were cutting your own hair, I would probably just take that much off. I wouldn't take a bunch off because if you're not comfortable cutting your own hair, this will give you time to take off more and learn as you go. Oh, spot that. Warm it out. Let's spin you around. Oh, now this here is not hooked. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. Is that good? Great. Yes. Okay. Is that good? Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, so she's happy with that length. When you're cutting your own hair, you're gonna do the perimeter. The perimeter is this area. So we've already done the back. Now we're going to move to the sides and the front. And you can see I don't have a whole lot over here. I'm going to put you back down. Sorry, Chad. We'll come back. We're just matching. Cherry and I live. So praying for all of you out there. You're dealing with COVID too. All right. Now to the front. Oh, this is really cool too because this is okay. Again, remember I was talking about hair line in the back. Cherry has short hair life in the front too. See how this hair grows. Cherry, this in your lifetime has never, ever gotten long, has it? No. See, I, I just met her, and I can tell you that, because that is genetics. It says, is that your phone now? <laughs> That's her phone now. <laughs> and what that means is, is that, again, this hair, it just gets to about right here, and then it falls out, and a new one comes in. It's just her genetic hair life. So she, there's no need for her to dream about having some long hair down here. It will never happen. So this is actually really common too, to not have a long hair life in certain areas. Because this is so shallow, there's not much you could see this. Let me get a white towel. Cherry, mm -hmm. can you can hold this like this for me? Yes. Perfect. So now you guys can see how shallow this hair is. It's like some of it manages to get here, but most of it only manages to get there. So to help it out, if we just let these hairs, eventually they break off. So we'll give it some strength. And we're going to cut that. When you're cutting around the face, don't cut straight across. It's more natural to give it a jaggedness. That's looking all good, this white towel. See that? So we're just giving it a little bit of a jaggedness. And then I'm framing her face. Now look at how few hairs there are, but they need to be cut. Mm -hmm. If you have a few wild, straggly hairs that end up breaking off. fairly blunt. So had I cut on a complete straight line, it would look way too blunt. Blunt around the face never looks good unless you're trying to do those um, thanks, Cherry. Those broom haircuts. 
that are real popular right now. But I would never suggest that for Cherry because her hair type cannot support that type of haircut. She needs a soft layered haircut. Okay, now the face. All I'm doing is blending it so she's got some movement around the face. Same over here. And always remember less is more. You can always cut more. Just give yourself a little bit, come back and go, oh, I think I want a little more. I'm going to do a little more. All right. Now the layering. You guys are going to be shocked because you're probably thinking, oh, I can't layer my hair. Yeah, you can because there's not a lot to do. A lot of people don't realize that there isn't that much to do unless, again, you're that super thick haired client. Then that's different. Most people don't have a lot. When it comes to layering, you're picking up the center core of the hair is left out. If you cut into your perimeter, you're gonna mess up your haircut. You can see Cherry doesn't have a lot of hair around the face, so I have to make sure to leave that hair out. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up cutting into her hair. So remember when I said earlier, precision is not important because it needs to be what looks right, not what is precision, meaning every little section is picked up and pulled up. It just needs to be what's right. So now when I look at this on the side, that looks like a normal amount of hair. I can leave all that hair out. So I need to leave out a little more. Pull this up. So I'm not going to be pulling out as much hair on the side because she has a little bit more shallowness over here. So we're gonna leave all that out. So now you can see, I've pulled out all the perimeter and I'm not gonna mess up her perimeter this way. Layering is always to be done straight out from the head. Pull this up a little bit. So her hair is not growing out this way. It's growing from this way. So that's the angle that you should have your hands. I should say that's the angle that you should comb the hair. Bring this back. Film yourself. Oh, yes. See that angle? That's the angle you need to be in. You comb it all. Look, it's the whole section. Unless you have a truckload of hair, you see hairdressers and they take 40 hair sections, you don't need to do all that. And remember, we're just trying to make it look right. It's not. We're not trying to get some perfect precision haircut. Um, you know, that's for the hairdresser to do. You're doing this yourself. All right. Now, oh, that white towel, Cherry. No, that's, oh, I took it. I'm just going to borrow this. Because I want to be able to show people. You can just hold it for me for a sec. Because I want to make sure that you guys can see how little hair is up here. See that? That's the hair that we're gonna be cutting. It's not a lot. The biggest mistake people make is being too aggressive, whether you're a hairdresser or doing it yourself. 
this is the hair that needs to be trimmed. Now remember, she asked me to cut off some length. So I will be cutting all this off. But had she just asked me to trim, I would only be doing these, this little bit right here. So if you're just trying to trim your hair, you just do a little bit. Okay, just a teeny bit. Trying to figure out where I can see that. Oh, there we go. Okay. But she asked me to take off length. Remember? So I am going to be coming in here. And remember again, straight is not, it's going to create these hard lines in the hair. Chip at it. So that it's jagged. Okay, we're not looking for precision. Oh, we finally are back. Oh, wait. This, um, I think, uh, California uh, COVID thing just blasted our streaming, but I think uh, all the messages have gone out now, so they put us. Last part to Cherry's hair. Sorry about that. Showed you guys, I wanted you to pull all this up. Go off to the side, take off all these little strands. You don't need them right there. All it is is this core area. And then you're going to do one more thing and just bring it to the front because you always have to blend. Whatever you cut in, you're going to need to blend. Push this up. Oh, I love the right background. That's going to help us out a lot. All right. This is where we finished cutting, but notice that it goes up and then down. We need to take that point off. That's the blend from here to here is that point. And we just took it off. So you guys all these years probably think hairdressers do all kinds of crazy magical stuff and we don't. It's just less is more. Like you want a little bit more layering in the front, bring this front into an angle. If there's any little bits like that, Again, take those off. Those little bits are just creating a little bit of layering down in here. That's it. Believe it or not, that is all you need to do. Now, one more thing. Some people, Cherry's not one of them. Some people are super thick down here. And you're going to need to come down here and you can even see it when I put it away to the side like that, that ledge right there. If you have really thick, you need to take the ledge off. Otherwise, this just looks too thick down here. Cherry doesn't have much at all. That's why all you're seeing is that little. Put that on the white. There we go. All she has is a little teeny piece right there. If she was a thick haired person, you would need to get in here and really dig that out because otherwise this just looks super, super thick down here. But that also is a rare occasion. Most people don't have super thick. Most people are medium to normal density hair. But every now and then you have somebody, if you're really, really thick, you will need to get down in there and do that. But that's it. All right, that's all you need to do, whether it's your daughter's hair, your hair, it's that simple. The last thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, put it in here because everybody should leave with some style. <laughs> and I love to use the flat iron. Now, uh, flat irons, it does matter. You do not need to use...
don't lose our connection, but the thing is going off again. You don't need a really expensive um, iron, but you do need a decent iron. And in fact, hold on. I bought this from Costco yesterday. It's um, the T3. T3 is an amazing company. They have some of the best flat irons on the market. But this isn't one of them. <laughs> it's $50 at Costco and it's a terrible iron. It is their dumbed down version. So all the companies make irons. But just like Prius, sorry, all the other companies, they have their less expensive model. That's their less expensive model. It only gets to 410 degrees. It is not a hot enough iron. If you have straight hair and you just want to use it to put some curls in your hair, that iron will work fine. But if you're like Cherry or me, that you have a little bit of frizz, a little bit of coarseness to your hair, it's not going to put shine in. Oh, we're back. We're here and the phones are going crazy because of the um, COVID alert. Cherry and I actually live in a place where there are zero ICU beds. So um, our phones are going off like crazy right now. And I notice how when I come in here, I start here and roll. It doesn't matter if you're going to use a flat iron or a curling iron. You would still put the hair in the iron the same way. A lot of people, when they curl hair, they will put the iron here and roll the hair up. The problem with that, it's still the same. I want you to put it at the scalp and roll the hair in. So that way, the hair gets curled at the scalp and not burned at the ends. And for all curl, it's the best way. Whether you curl it with a flat iron, a curling iron, it doesn't matter. Or a round brush. Make sure you put some curl to your hair. Cherry has uh, some natural wave to her hair. So her hair loves responding to the iron, whether it be a curling iron or a flat iron. But um, I constantly have people tell me, oh, my hair won't hold a curl, my hair won't hold a curl. Your hair will absolutely hold a curl. Now, there are people who have super stick straight hair um, that will need a flat iron to curl the hair. The reason why the flat iron works better is because it has two heating elements. Both of the plates are being heated. A curling iron, just the barrel is being heated. So the plate that goes over the top part of the hair has heat to it, but doesn't continue to be heated. So it just doesn't iron the hair as well. But I use the curling iron all the time. It's not that it doesn't work. I just prefer the flat iron, it works better. Hey, no alarm in like five minutes, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're safe with the COVID. We send you from California healing energy. If you have a family member that is dealing with COVID, or maybe you have a family member that can't work, um, we're sending you prayers and hope that your business or your job, whatever it is, um, you can get back to that as soon as possible. This COVID is hurting people in so many ways. I actually have my YouTube channel because of COVID. I just wanted to help people. As we get to the back here, you guys could really see how much 
her hair has grown out, and how it blends so well. So the Jack Martin is great. He does the color remover and then does the highlight. The good thing about that is the client is completely silvered and toned. Um, the bad thing for me is I don't like the color remover. They're very unpredictable and it makes the client have to be here for many, many hours. Um, Cherry said she was here for four hours when we did this original highlight. The color remover would have added at least at a minimum another two to three hours. So, you know, she would have instantly went from a four hour service to a seven hour service. Most clients don't like to sit here that long, but also it's a lot on the hair. And that is the other thing that I don't like. Because when you go home with all those chemicals on your hair, if you don't take care of it, it's gonna break off. The hair, if we put color remover and then a heavy highlight, that is a lot on the hair, a lot of chemicals. And so the client needs to really baby that hair. If they don't baby the hair, then the hair is gonna break off. Um, the other thing about that process, because it does put the hair through a lot, the fadage is also usually pretty bad. Because remember, um, Cherry said her hair was fine up until very recently, but she only had one chemical on her hair. She didn't have a color remover and a highlight. Um, a lot of those people with the highlight or the color remover and the highlight that toner wears out really fast because it's going on super porous hair. So it's another reason why I don't like to do the color remover. It just really puts the hair in a very um, fragile place. And you could see um, Cherry doesn't have any breakage anywhere. Her hair is doing great. Even in this spot where we solidly took her light her hair is still doing great. My favorite iron, by the way, Fabulous. You shouldn't need to spend more than $100 on an iron. Um, FHI is another favorite brand of mine. Uh, I'm not a chi fan. I'm not a fan of an iron that doesn't have a heating up, um, a temperature gauge. I want to see what the temperature is. If it doesn't have a temperature gauge, I immediately do not want the iron because I don't know. Does that mean it gets hot enough or not hot enough? Uh, maybe my client needs less heat. I want to be able to turn it down and I want to be able to know what I need to turn it down to. The irons when they first came out were very expensive, but you don't need to spend a ton of money anymore. They're not that expensive anymore. But like I said, that T3 from Costco for $50, no good. But if you were to happen to find, um, there are certain brands that do not make um, dumbed down version. Babyless is one, they don't have a dumbed down version. If the iron gets to 450, that's what I'm looking for. I want to at least have the control because many times you need 450. Um, I'm using 450 on cherries here now. I will not achieve the shine that I want if I don't have it on 450. Oh, and one more thing. We live in the Bay Area where there is fog. If I don't put enough heat on her hair, as soon as she goes out into the fog, she'll have puffy hair, frizzy hair. That's another reason why it's really important to um, iron the hair correctly. Remember when we were talking about doing the highlight and I was telling you how you can't put too much hair in the foil? It's the same with the blow dry and the round brush. 
and it's the same with the iron. You can't put too much hair in the iron. The iron will not perform. There's some beautiful hair. Blended it all. Nice little trim. Um, let's see if I can get close enough. She's got a couple spots that are a little bit more lavender. I don't know if this is gonna let you see it or not. But it doesn't matter because. Oh, here's the one spot that came out the most lavender. It's just this one little piece. I want to, hopefully I can light it up. Yeah, I can right there. But it doesn't matter because number one, this is going to fade out. And number two, remember what I told you, the thing we're fighting the most when we transition is cool to warm. So to have a cool piece running through her warm reddish brown hair that is still there, is a good thing. It cools it down. That is what you're trying to do when you transition. Cool it down. And you can see, you can't tell where her hair, you know, this is her natural color. This is artificial from here down, but it's not an obvious line anymore. So remember when we transition, that's all you need to do to make yourself feel comfortable is break up the line. It doesn't have to be the Jack Martin. It just needs to be broken up so you can't see that this is solid and flat and warm and this is sparkly and cool. And then the other thing that I pointed out earlier was matching. The matching. When you can find a streak, make sure that you put a streak in there. Don't have this be light and then this be dark. When you see those obvious streaks, it should be light all the way through. If it's not, you're not going to be happy. And then, then the last thing around the face. White hair is right off the part. That's the other thing that I can tell you if you are happy. All right. This is Cherry four months later. Her gorgeous head of hair. Remember, she colored her own hair. She kept running it through the ends every time she said, and I was still able to get her hair light enough. But it was because you've got to take the correct amount of hair in the foil in order to get the hair light enough. I'm gonna turn her all the way around to the back so you can see what we lightened. This is her old artificial hair color. It was dark and it was red, but we were able to get it all the way to a platinum color. And last thing, hair lifts the same. It doesn't matter who you are, what your nationality is. You know, we're produced by religious people will call it God. Some people will call it all, almighty, whatever it is. We all lighten the same. The big problem with the silver toning is this right here. These are both yellow. When we lighten hair, we go from red to red orange, orange to yellow orange to yellow and then pale yellow. If you take it off here, the bleach, this is not the correct color. You have to wait to get to light yellow for it to be able to be a silver toner. So remember, it matters. It matters a lot. You've got, um, they call hairdressers creative, but we're not. It's science. If you don't meet science, you won't have the color you want. Thank you so much for putting up with my horrible um, videotaping, crashing to the floor and all the California emergency alerts. I really appreciate all of you YouTubers, my Facebook people, my friends, my family. From the bottom of my heart, Julie the Herapist, thanks for watching. Have a great day.